So the final topic we have to look at in year 11 is solubility. And as you might expect, solubility is all to do with how well things dissolve. Um, and at GCC level, generally what we're talking about is how well things dissolve in water. You might be thinking, well, how on earth do you get a whole topic out of things dissolving in water? Basically, there's two main areas for us to look at in this booklet. The first area, which is quite short, is just trying to work out what substances dissolve and what substances don't dissolve and being able to spot each case. But then most of the book is actually kind of a wee bit mathematical. It's about how we calculate how soluble something is and giving it a value for solubility and how we can like manipulate and interpret those values. So it's a wee bit of maths, but there's nothing too complicated in terms of calculations. So starting on the first page, we got this first section, which kind of describes how we can tell whether things dissolve or don't dissolve in water. So we start with this pretty introduction. Water is an excellent solvent which is important for life on Earth. For example, nutrients and vitamins can only reach all parts of our body if they can dissolve in the water that makes up blood. So it kind of life depends on the fact that things can dissolve in water. However, not all substances dissolve in water, which you probably are quite familiar with by now. Um, now, you might be thinking, well, how do we know whether something dissolves or doesn't dissolve in water? There's no kind of neat trick to work it out. Basically, you have to do lots of experiments. What we have got at our disposable GCC level is the back of the periodic table. Now, we've used that phrase, back of your periodic table, quite a lot this year in terms of working out the formula and charges of ions for things like swaps and drops, things like that. What we've been ignoring up to this point is the bottom half of the back of the periodic table, which is a table that looks like this. You can check your periodic table to, pre to confirm that it's actually there. What we've got is a little table that describes to us how we're going to spot soluble and insoluble salts. So we're talking about compounds here. We're talking about compounds of chlorides, bromides, iodides, sulfates, carbonates, hydroxides and oxides. So lots of kind of compounds we've come across um, this year. So again, you don't have to learn stuff by heart because this table is an exam, but we just make, need to make sure we can understand what the table is telling us. So we've got two categories here. We've got a list of soluble salts and a list of insoluble salts. And these are the rules you can go off in the exam if they give you a compound to work out if it's going to be soluble or insoluble in water. First thing it tells us is that all sodium, potassium and ammonium salts are soluble in water. What we, what we mean by that is anything that starts with sodium in an ionic compound will dissolve. Sodium chloride dissolves, sodium sulfate dissolves, sodium iodate um, dissolves. Anything starting with sodium does dissolve. Similarly, all nitrates, so nitrates obviously are a non-metal ion, so anything that ends in nitrate will dissolve. Potassium nitrate, calcium nitrate, copper nitrate, all of them will dissolve as well. Most chlorides, bromides and iodides except silver and lead chloride, bromide and iodide. So we can assume if something ends in chloride, bromide or iodide, it can dissolve unless it's silver, silver chloride, bromide or iodide or lead chloride, bromide or iodide. Most sulfates dissolve except lead and barium sulfate, fair enough. Calcium sulfate a wee bit in between, it's only slightly soluble, doesn't dissolve very well. The insoluble category is a wee bit simpler. We just have three classes of things that don't dissolve generally. Most carbonates, most hydroxides, most oxides do not dissolve, except these exceptions, which are sodium, potassium and ammonium versions of those. Um, with oxides, calcium oxides also react rather than dissolving. One way point here you might kind of um, be sitting in your head, you might be a really bit confused by. In the acids, bases and salts topic, I kind of told you that um, if something's a metal hydroxide, it's generally an alkali because it's soluble in water. I was kind of lying to you there. Um, in the terms of the topic, in that topic, acids, bases and salts, the main hydroxides you looked at were sodium potassium hydroxide, which are in fact soluble, and they are the main alkalis you come across. But just to clarify, to be completely accurate, a lot of hydroxides are actually insoluble and will be bases rather than alkalis. Anyway, so again, you have to learn stuff by heart, but just interpreting it and using it, we'll have a wee practice that in the next couple of pages. Down at the bottom, a couple of key terms. When soluble substances are added to water, they dissolve and form an aqueous solution, is the word we've used there. Which can be, again, you have two options there once it's dissolved. It can be colourless or can be coloured, so you give a specific colour with it. When insoluble substances are added to water, they do not dissolve and the water appears, again, there's not a perfect word there, generally it'll appear cloudy because it won't dissolve, the solid will just sit there and um, mixed up with the water. So, 
putting that into practice, this is something that could come up in the exam. It's not a very common question, but they could ask it. Work out if the following substances are insoluble or soluble in water. So basically, we're having to practice using that back of the periodic table to categorise these compounds. So first one, copper to oxide. If you look back at the table, probably if we look at oxides, probably the easiest thing because we don't see copper mentioned. Most oxides are insoluble apart from sodium, potassium and calcium and which react. So copper's not mentioned there, therefore I can assume that copper oxide will be insoluble. So with that in mind, I probably would suggest, um, have a look at that example, have a go at the rest of these. Use the, either the front page of your notes or the back of your periodic table. Try and work out whether these compounds, according to the rules on that table, are going to be insoluble or soluble. Then I'll go through the answers. So hopefully this is what you got. Silver nitrate should be soluble because in our rules for soluble substances, all nitrates are soluble. Sodium carbonate is soluble as well. Most carbonates are insoluble, but all sodium salts are soluble. Zinc hydroxide is insoluble because most hydroxides are insoluble apart from sodium, potassium and ammonium. Zinc's not there, so it must be insoluble. Lead nitrate is soluble, again, because all nitrates are soluble. Magnesium chloride is soluble because most chlorides are soluble apart from silver and lead, so magnesium is fine. And finally, barium sulfate is insoluble. Whilst most sulfates are soluble, barium sulfate is listed as an exception. It's insoluble. So again, you're just using that table in the back of your periodic table. Um, to categorise these compounds. Next little thing we can extend with this, this is nothing new, it's just kind of applying it to a different scenario. We can use that solubility information to work out if precipitate is going to be formed in a reaction. So we looked at precipitate in the last topic, chemical analysis, because when you form precipitate, sometimes that can be used as a chemical test. If you think about it, in terms of what precipitate is, a precipitate is just a solid formed from two solutions. So in other words, the solutions have reacted to make a salt which happens to be insoluble in water. When you make something as insoluble in water, it's going to turn into a solid, which is what you see as a precipitate. So we can predict that by looking at an equation, looking at the products we form, and seeing if any of the products are actually insoluble in water. So the first one is a big example for you. We've got this reaction between sodium hydroxide, copper to sulfate to make copper to hydroxide plus sodium sulfate. Let's do a wee analysis of the solubility there. Sodium hydroxide is, hydroxides whilst often insoluble, sodium hydroxide is soluble. So it's going to be, I'm going to S for soluble. Copper to sulfate again, um, most sulfates are soluble including copper, so that's going to be soluble as well. Copper to hydroxide though, most hydroxides are insoluble including copper hydroxide, so I'm going to give it an I. And then sodium sulfate, most sulfates are soluble including sodium, so it's going to be soluble. If you think about it, if I have sodium hydroxide solution, copper sulfate solution, because these can dissolve, and mix them together and get the, these products formed, the copper hydroxide I form is not going to stay in solution. It can't dissolve. It's insoluble. Therefore, it will form a solid, which will be what I call precipitate. And again, if you think about it back to the last topic, what we've got described here, this equation, is actually the equation for the test for copper ions. If you remember, we use sodium hydroxide to make precipitates. Um, copper hydroxide's precipitate is a blue colour. And that's the reason why you're forming copper hydroxide, which is insoluble. Therefore, it allows you to see that precipitate forming. You're asked for the symbol equation here. It doesn't specifically tell you, but it's always good to put um, state symbols in this kind of equation because you're getting different types of substance, whether they dissolve or don't dissolve. Sodium hydroxide, again, I'll just do it quickly. Obviously, swap and drop to work out the formula. NaOH for sodium hydroxide, copper sulfate is CuSO4, copper 2 hydroxide is CuOH2, so I'm going to drop in the 2 plus for copper 2 plus, and then sodium sulfate Na2SO4 needed we 2 here to get it um, balanced. What I'm talking about in terms of state symbols is just if it dissolves, I can make it a solution, so I'm going to call it AQ and AQ. However, if it's insoluble, it's wrong to say AQ because it can't dissolve. It gets a wee S for solid, um, and sodium sulfate again gets AQ. So see if you have a go at the second one there, just using the same analysis we looked at for the top one, then we'll go through the answer. So hopefully this is the equation you got. Again, it kind of seems a wee bit of a trick question. What you should have found is that all the things in this equation actually are soluble in water. Therefore, it's just a normal equation where everything ends up staying in solution, AQ, 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 AQ. So there'd be no precipitate formed in this reaction. 
So the final thing to look at in terms of analysing sulks to work out if they're soluble or insoluble, we've got so many questions on page three, um, which are a wee bit practice of working out, will you form precipitate in a reaction? So remember the key thing there is you'll form a precipitate whenever you make something which is insoluble from two solutions. So we're trying to analyse these equations, see if um, any of them will form precipitate, and then the bomb are asked to, to form some equations. So I'll do one other example, but we get you to pause and then check your answers afterwards. So question one, we're given an equation, decide if each of the following reactions forms a precipitate, and if so, name the precipitate. So again, for question one, I just have to look at my salts, look at my table on my periodic table, and work out if anything is insoluble. So sodium chloride um, is soluble in water, potassium nitrate is soluble in water, potassium chloride is also soluble in water, and sodium nitrate is also soluble in water. So in that case, in the first reaction, we actually don't get any precipitate. So maybe not the best, for example, we'll do the second one then. Um, barium chloride um, is soluble, sodium sulfate is soluble as well, sodium chloride is soluble as well, but barium sulfate is one of the exceptions. Most sulfates are soluble apart from barium and um, lead sulfates, therefore we will form precipitate, the precipitate will be barium sulfate. So that's all you need to do for this part. So we go pause the video, do questions 3, 4 and 5, then check back. So hopefully this is what you found for the remaining questions. Um, again, there's one precipitate in each case. Silver chloride in question 3 is insoluble, therefore be precipitate. Calcium carbonate is insoluble, therefore get you precipitate. And the last one, aluminium hydroxide, is insoluble, so that'll be your precipitate here. We've got a wee kind of extension question down the bottom. A bit of practice, which is actually worth doing probably, because you haven't really done many equations recently. And again, writing equations is always a good chemical skill. You'll need it in year 12 chemistry as well. Write balance symbol equations with state symbols for the reactions above. So again, I'll get you to pause and have a go with them. Um, basically, to give you a word equation there, it's practicing using your swap and drops. In terms of state symbols, it's not maybe very clearly explained. For now, we'll just assume if it's not going to be a precipitate, which is a solid, just imagine it's in a solution, because that's how mostly reactions will take place, dissolved in water. So give it AQ if it's soluble, or S for solid if it's insoluble. So have we go with those now. So hopefully that's what you got for those equations. Again, I did them quite quickly, so I could make a mistake. Let me know if I have. Um, so just swap and draw practice, putting your state symbols in. I think the only one just worth going over just quickly is question four, so be a bit unusual. Fair enough, your precipitate is calcium carbonate, so it gets the S. One thing to be careful about, carbon dioxide is obviously a gas, so give it a wee G. Be really careful with H2O, see a lot of mistakes with it. Whilst AQ means something's dissolved in water, it doesn't make sense to say that water is dissolved in water. So it doesn't get AQ. Water is a liquid in its own right, so it gets a wee L for that one.